Static indeterminacy refers to a condition where a structure has more support reactions or constraints than necessary to keep it in equilibrium under applied loads. Imagine trying to hold a book steady with two hands when one hand is enough. That's static indeterminacy. It's like having extra support that doesn't really contribute to the structure's stability. Kinematic indeterminacy, on the other hand, relates to the potential for excessive deformation or movement within a structure when subjected to external forces. It's like trying to predict how much a rubber band will stretch when you pull it. The more unpredictable the stretch, the higher the kinematic indeterminacy. In practice, engineers analyze these indeterminacies to design structures that are both stable and predictable. By striking the right balance between static and kinematic indeterminacy, they ensure safety and functionality in construction projects. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. We'll talk about static indeterminacy, we'll talk about kinematic indeterminacy. Static indeterminacy is related to flexibility method. Kinematic indeterminacy is related to stiffness or displacement methods. Now, what are these methods? These are two methods that we will use to solve our indeterminate structures. We do not use the ordinary methods to work out member forces in indeterminate structures. But because these methods are quite tedious, if number of forces or unknowns are quite a lot, then normally we will use the computer to work out the loads. For flexibility method or force method, SI must be known for stiffness or displacement method, KI must be known. In modern software, this is stiffness or displacement method, which is the main basis of finite element method, is key. It is easier to implement. How do we work out static indeterminacy? So degree of static indeterminacy, if unknowns are equal to e equations, then we say that it is a determinate structure. If unknowns are greater than equilibrium equations, then we say that it is indeterminate structure. How about if unknowns are less than equilibrium equations, then we say that it is mechanism or collapse. Take example of a simple beam. How many unknowns are there? We have one reaction, we have another reaction, and here we have one reaction. Unknown reactions are three. Equilibrium equations are three. Is this determinate or indeterminate? Determinate. It is determinate. Now, another example, if I have fixed support and if I have a pin support here, the reactions are one, two, and three. And here the reactions are two. How many unknowns are there? Five. Five. How many equilibrium equations are there? Three. Three all the time, okay, for 2D space. Degree of static indeterminacy, the formula is U minus E. So here SI, is equal to 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. So when SI is 0, it means that this is determinate. And here, unknowns are 5, equations are 3, my static indeterminacy is 2. It means that this is indeterminate. It means that there are two redundant members here. There are two extra members here. And most of the real life structures are indeterminate. There are always extra members. Now take this example. If I had a roller on one side and if I had roller on other side, it has got two reactions. So how many unknowns are there? Two. How many equations are there? Three. So SI will be equal to unknowns minus equilibrium equations. Unknowns are two. Equations are three. So this minus is going to be minus one. In roller, what happens? It will simply roll and then it will not be stable. So this is unstable or this is collapse or this is mechanism. If we take another example, if we have this kind of situation, you can see that we have two reactions here. So unknowns are two, equations are three. Again, SI will be equal to U minus E. So two minus three, this is equal to minus one. It means that these two structures are mechanism. These two structures are collapse structures. So is, it, is that saying that the, the bottom one, is that saying that it's only supported on one side then? It's only supported on one side and the rotation is allowed as well. It's a pin. Yes. Like a cantilever. Cantilever is different. So cantilever is determinate. So cantilever is fixed at the end and it will have three reactions. So this is cantilever is determinate, but the pin, 
the one with the pin, it will not stay, it will collapse. So this is the general concept of static indeterminacy. What do we do if we have two dimensional pin jointed structures? Most of the steel structures are pin jointed structures. Then we use these formula. So M is number of members. When we have a lot, a lot of members, then we do not use this simple formula. And J is number of joints, including supports. R is total number of reactions. SI is degree of indeterminacy. Now this is for two dimensional planar structures. Number of equilibrium equations are two times J. And there are two equilibrium equations in trusses. So we do not have summation of moment because moments are not there in trusses. So that's why at each joint we will have force in x direction and force in y direction. Total number of unknowns are sum of axial forces in member, i.e. m forces, plus reactions. These will be your u. So u is equal to m plus r, means member forces plus reactions. And in trusses or in pin jointed structures, you can only have tension or compression. That is one axial force. So that's why it's one times m. If it was a beam or a frame member and beam or a frame member, you will have three forces. You will have moment and you will have axial force and you will have shear force. In a beam element, you will have, or a frame element, you will have three M. R will be revised as well, but this is for pin jointed structures. The total number of unknowns are M plus R. Again, this is telling you if U is equal to the equilibrium equations 2J, then it's determinate if it is less than equilibrium equations, then it is collapsed, and if it is greater, then it is indeterminate. The formula for finding out static indeterminacy is u minus e. Now here u is m plus r for 2D pin jointed structures minus 2j. 2j is number of equilibrium equations at each joint. At each joint, certainly you will have only two forces, fx and fy. That's why it is 2j. Now how about 3D pin jointed structures? In 3D pin jointed structures, you will still have only axial forces. So this will not change. So M plus R will not change because in trusses you will have only axial force. But number of equilibrium equations will change because in truss a joint can move in X direction, in Y direction and in Z direction. So that's why it is 3J over here. Now how about 2D rigidly jointed structures, fixed structures? In each member you will have three forces which will be axial force, tension or compression, and shear force, vertical load, and moment. So that's why we have this 3M here plus R because it's a frame element. It is rigid jointed structure minus 3J. Each joint can move in horizontal direction, can move in vertical direction, and each joint can develop a moment as well. So that's why it is 3J. For 3D rigidly jointed structures, you will have six forces in a member. So a member can have axial force, it can have bending moment, and it can have, so it, it can have forces in three directions, it can have moments in three directions. So that's why it's going to be 6M plus R. Equally, you will have six joint forces as well. So these are different formula for different types of structures. Let me take example of pin jointed structure. Here, this member BC and this member AD, these members are passing over each other. They are not joined together. So calculate degree of indeterminacy. So first of all, the formula for this SI is equal to M plus R minus 2J. Firstly, we have to count number of joints, including supports, and times it by 2J. Have a look at it carefully and see how many joints are there. That is seven, so times it by two, it's 14. And then I have to count number of members. Now have a look. Number of members are 13, and then number of reactions. This kind of pin over here, it means it's a pin support. So two at A, one at E, and two at G. So two plus one plus two. Now simply we will put everything in this formula. This will give us M plus R minus two J four. It means that this structure is redundant by four. It means that it has four extra forces. It has four extra members. Even if we didn't have these four members, it will still survive. It means that even if I move two braces, it will still survive. I will move to three dimensional pin jointed structure. Now the formula for three dimension is different. The formula for SI for pin jointed three dimension is M plus R minus 3J instead of 2J. Because at each joint I will have three forces. 
So number of equilibrium equations are three times j. So all joints three times eight is twenty-four. And then next thing, number of members. Still counting. Number of members are fifteen. And then number of reactions. Because this is a pin support in three dimensions, it will have three reactions. Twelve. And then degree of static indeterminacy is m plus r minus 3j. It will give you value of 3. I will move on then. So number of equilibrium equations, first of all, we have to count the number of joints. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 3 times 8 is 24. Then number of members. We have 9 members. Now the formula here will be for rigidly jointed structures 3m plus r minus 3j. The reason is that we will have three forces in rigidly jointed structure. It will be forces in x and y and moment. Number of reactions are 3 and 2. Now degree of static indeterminacy will be equal to 3m plus r minus 3j. If we put all these values, you will get value of 8. Now how about 3D frame, rigidly jointed? First we count the joints, 6 times 17. Those structures, they are very rigid. Number of members, 20. And number of reactions are, again, 8 times 6, 48. So if you put it in this formula, 6m plus r minus 6j, this has got static indeterminacy of 66. Now, if you were to solve this structure using hand, maybe you would need 500 pages of calculations, OK? Which software do we use to solve these type of? Yes, so you can use any uh, finite element software. You can use S Frame. You can use Stat Pro. You can use ETabs. It means that there are sixty-six redundant members or joints. Now, the maximum in this course that I'm going to analyze would be probably one or two static indeterminacy, and that will have quite a lot of long procedure. So, if I had sixty-six, then it would be extremely difficult to analyze it with hand, right? It would be very tedious. If you have a structure which happens to be combination of uh, rigid and pin joints, these indicate rigid joints and the joints where no same circle is there, that indicates the rigid joint. So first, initially treat it as rigidly jointed structure. It means apply this formula, 3m plus r minus 3j. Then si is equal to 8. Now, after that, because we have this pin here, a pin cannot take any moment. A rigid joint will always take moment. So these two pins cannot take any moment. So we will have to subtract two forces from here. So as a result, our SI is going to be six. This is a frame where we have pinned joints. Is this a structure stable or not stable? Okay, let's apply the formula. First of all, I mean, looking at it, tell me if it is stable or not. I it think no. Not. Formula is M plus R minus 2J. This is a pin joint in the structure. Number of members, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Reactions are 3, 2 here, and 1 here. 3 minus joints are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Minus 4. So you'd need to add in four joints or yes. reactions in order to... You need to add in four brace type of structure because we have pins. Looking at it, you cannot analyze it in a software. The reason is that the structure is going to collapse. So if I apply loading, it's going to collapse. Because the reason is that all joints are pinned. They cannot take any moment. Now this tells me why this bracing is important. So if I add four members here, so when I add these four members as bracing members, then my SI is going to be zero. And this is the reason that we provide a bracing because in steel structures, most of the joints are pinned. So if we leave it as it is, it is going to collapse. So okay. can this be used for like um, scaffolding as well? Yes, definitely. Yeah, okay. it can be for any structure where joints are pinned. 
we use a simple approach to calculating kinematic indeterminacy. Remember that static indeterminacy is related to forces. We were talking about forces. And kinematic indeterminacy is some of degree of freedom. It is related to deflections, okay? Ability to deflect. Sum of degrees of freedom at nodes minus degrees of freedom that are prevented by constraints, such as supports. In this beam, the total degrees of freedom are at each joint, there are three degrees of freedom, possible degrees of freedom, which are it can move vertically, it can move horizontally, and it can rotate. Now I'm talking about displacements. Note the difference. Previously, it was forces. Now at B, the total degrees of freedom, if you don't consider supports, at B, again, it, it has ability to rotate and it can move vertically, it can move horizontally. So total degrees of freedom are nine. Take away constrained degrees of freedom. What is constrained? There are two reactions in terms of forces. If you take in terms of forces, so it, it cannot move vertically, it cannot move horizontally. But here I'm talking about in terms of displacements. So it cannot displace vertically, it cannot displace horizontally. It means it has got two constrained degrees of freedom. At B, it has got one constrained degree of freedom, which means it cannot move vertically. Here, it cannot move vertically as well. So in total, it's four. So total degrees of freedom minus constraint, it will give me five. In the same way, the key thing here is that number of joints. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight joints. This is a truss, so it's a pin joint in structure. So degree of freedom at each joint is two. It has ability to move vertically, ability to move horizontally. We are discarding rotation here. It will give you two times eight is 16. So total degrees of freedom are 16. Now constraint R because of this support, it's two. At this support, it's one. So two plus one is three. And 16 minus three, it will give you 13. And the next thing, this is rigidly jointed structure. Now here at each joint, I will have uh, three degrees of freedom. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times three is 18, which means that its ability to rotate and ability to move horizontally, ability to move vertically. And then constraint degrees of freedom are three because of supports. Thanks for watching this lecture today. Click on left side of the screen to watch another video relevant to this lecture. Click on right screen to watch full playlist on structural mechanics.